Let me invite my guest, Upasana Bharadwaj of uh, Kotak Bank, Nikhil Gupta of Motilal Oswal, Jayesh Mehta of uh, Bank of America and Abhishek Upadhyay of ICICI Securities PD are all with us. In a minute, we should get even uh, uh, Rupa Rege Mitsure of LNT Finance. Upasana, your thoughts first. Uh, would you take this very badly? Uh, I guess about 10, 15 basis points higher than the street. Uh, Lata, uh, we were at 7.27 oh, with okay. much higher food inflation. So clearly, uh, for us, it's a uh, you know a few bases down. Okay. Uh, but nonetheless, I think the point is that seven percent is a high inflation number, and overall core also is uh, clearly going to be above six percent. Okay. So core inflation and high food inflation, and even if you look at the high frequency data, that too is suggesting that September two has. Uh, seen a persistence in, uh, you know, uh, like uh, uh, sequential uh, pickup in food prices. Okay. So even the subsequent reading will probably be elevated. And uh, but having said that, I think RBI's numbers are broadly in sync with the quarterly average that we will eventually end up with, mm. and hence uh, not materially would change from a forward guidance of a 6.5 to 6.7 percent inflation. Fair enough. I, I think a point on that. Uh, uh, also, you would say their 7.1% for July, August, September also doesn't merit a change, you think? What is no, your expectation in September? Uh, yeah, so we are at 7.2% uh, for September. So I think we'll broadly be at 7.7 or 7.1% for the quarter. Okay, so they don't really have to revise their number higher. At the moment, the average for July and August together stand at 6.85%. So uh, uh, even if they go above seven, they will not. Uh, the average for the quarter doesn't like, uh, uh, doesn't look like it will grow above seven point one at all. To that extent, the Reserve Bank is not going to have any negative uh, shocks. Uh, Rupa, any comments on uh, the number? Okay, we'll just get to Rupa in a minute. Uh, still trying to get through to her. Abhishek Upadhyay, your thoughts. So we were at 6.9, so slightly right. higher. Uh, what we see is food inflation is higher, fuel and light component is lower. Uh, I'm getting core inflation at uh, 5.90, slightly down compared to 6% last month. Uh, so internals are broadly, I mean, uh, uh, in the big picture, not surprising. I, uh, I mean, food inflation is the key area of focus. And within food, you are seeing cereals inflation pick up. Uh, you could have sensed that from... Uh, recent announcements by government also in mm. the form of export that they were aware of this. Uh, so uh, clearly uh, uh, that risk is playing out and we have seen in the past that uh, once cereals inflation goes up that is a risk to other mm. parts of food inflation as well so in this but Abhishek, trend, were you proteins, prepared for a 10 percent cereal inflation it's coming at 9.97 uh, were you really prepared for that bad a number it is it is higher, Lata. It is higher, Lata. But we th we thought the risk uh, is towards a higher number only. Okay. Uh, and uh, I mean, the issue is broadly core inflation not budging down, and you have food inflation, uh, which is which is not benefited as much as some would have hoped from lower global food prices, uh, and you have this uh, domestic supply situation which is not looking good. So food inflation, upside risk, core inflation not coming down. So RBI should continue to be to remain uh, vigilant about risk to inflation okay coming to that uh, in a minute uh, uh, the industrial growth number like i told you has come in uh, uh, at a slightly meek uh, 2.4 percent uh, our uh, forecasts were higher uh, nikhil your thoughts on both uh, the cpi as well as the iip thank you lata for having me on the show uh, so, Lata, CPI is not a surprise. We were at 7%, mm. and uh, uh, we expect it to be close to 7% next month, that is September as well, which means the average for the current quarter will be 6.9%, slightly lower than RBI's. But uh, the first quarter, that is Jan to March, is where we believe uh, there could be a poor revision in those RBI forecasts. Okay. Uh, as far as IIP is concerned, uh, we were at 3.8%, and I think you told us it's 2.5%. Yes. Yes, which is which is a concern, but again, IIP numbers are extremely volatile, and we should not take too much from the monthly numbers. Mm. But generally, the growth trend, as far as industrial and investments are concerned, is not where the market was generally expecting. Let's say six or nine months, nine months ago, 
which is where I believe the growth concerns okay. will come up. Well, uh, I agree with you that the IIP number, its uh, components and its calculations have been called to question. Uh, but uh, that's all we have by way of an advanced indication of growth and that's not looking uh, terribly good. The uh, power number, electricity number is what is particularly intriguing at 2.3%. Uh, uh, Upasana, does that come as a bit of a surprise? I mean, we were doing fine on power. The fact that electricity year on year is only 2.3%, is that a, a point of bother? Lata, we already knew these numbers from the core uh, data that we got okay. towards the end last month. Okay. So that is really not a surprise. The 2.2, 2.3% was expected for electricity. Okay. Uh, it is the other aspects. I think the manufacturing is where I, I'll be more focused on. Okay. And particularly on the consumer side, I still need to see the details though. But I think the consumer segment is where uh, the bigger hit probably would have been. Okay. And we'll have to uh, look at the details to know which are the exact okay. components. But I would agree with Nikhil. These uh, these indicators are very volatile, yeah. and they may not necessarily always uh, uh, reflect the persistent trend going ahead as well. No, I take your point. The manufacturing incidentally has come in up 3.2%, and uh, consumer durables is minus 2%. So I think that uh, is the one that has dragged. So your worries are uh, you know in the right place. Uh, sorry, consumer non-durables has come in at uh, minus uh, 2%. Uh, uh, consumer durables has come in at 2.4 percent so it's not as bad in any case uh, consumer goods has been a bit of a weak link consumer non durables coming in in negative and consumer durables coming in ma marginally positive uh, those are the numbers uh, Abhishek any point to comment on IIP or can we go back to our CPI well, so yeah, uh, we had expected a stronger number uh, mm. uh, we thought the previous month the the sequential Momentum was quite strong, and we finally thought IIP will begin to reflect the strength in some of the other high-frequency data. But this print again has surprised on the downside. And uh, while you mentioned consumer durables is not bad in headline terms, in sequential month-on-month -month seasonally adjusted basis, it is still contracted. So, uh, not a very not a very sound number. At the same time, uh, I, I would think when you are talking about uh, translation from IIP to GDP. What will be more important is uh, how uh, global commodity prices have come down and the implication of that on uh, the corporate margins, which will show up there. So yeah. uh, it was a drag in Q1 because commodity prices were high, input prices were high. Uh, it will act, it should act on reverse uh, mm. in the second and third quarters. If, yes, sir. If the I prices, mean, if the drop sustains in international prices. Yeah, if if uh, the stock market reaction is anything to go by, earnings is the last thing we should be worried about. Uh, uh, there are people who are expecting, I mean, earnings upgrades have come for banks, but perhaps they will come for others. And I think it's come in even for consumer uh, capital goods uh, from Morgan Stanley. So there are a few earnings upgrades uh, that people are talking about. Uh, well, uh, Rupa Regi Nitsure has joined us. Uh, Rupa, what's your uh, take on a 7% inflation higher than our pool? Well, I'm happy because my forecast was 7.1%. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but uh, that was expected because, okay. um, uh, you know, uh, sequentially we had seen um, across the board increase in the okay. prices of cereals, pulses, edible oils, etc. Okay. And this link of, uh, you know, the kerosene, LPG prices, uh, which were raised in July, that has also carried forward. Okay. And Lata, if you have observed, you know, at the higher end of the curve, even the home prices, rentals are going up. So that must have uh, taken uh, 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 core inflation. Okay. So I was expecting 18 to 20 bips increase sequential in core inflation. Mm. So my forecast was 7.1 percent. Okay. So closer All right. to that. Core inflation is 10 bips higher. I mean, actually, we are making much of small differences, I guess. Uh, inflation yeah. has a ballpark come in line with expectations at a slightly higher end. Uh, what makes the combination a little unhappy is that inflation is slightly higher than expected and growth is slightly lower than expected. That's not a very happy combo uh, for an economist or for uh, uh, the stock market. But nevertheless, uh, so the numbers are at the margin a bit disappointing. Uh, Jayesh Mehta is with us waiting patiently. Jayesh, does the bond market even care? There is a rally out there. Yeah, I think uh, from a bond market, uh, we are waiting for some other news, some meetings going to happen, um, and that's going to be the decider. So yes. 
we don't know the outcome. Uh, it's a digital outcome either way. So if it happens, uh, we could have a further rally or maybe it can uh, retrace okay, back. You're by talking about the FOMC or MPC? The, what are you talking about? No, the, the, the index inclusion thing, right? So oh, that's right the thing. Fair right? enough, fair enough. Okay. About, right now, that's the big thing for the bond market. But if you look at the OIS market, that's pricing in, right? So, and I would... I would say as of right now, OIS market is pricing in uh, rate hike uh, in September as well as the next policy. So OIS market is pricing in that. So that's priced in. Uh, bond market uh, is waiting for some structural change. If it happens, uh, we'll come to know as and when we'll mm. come to know. Okay. Uh, but uh, the expectation uh, is largely priced in, would you say, the bond inclusion? Uh, if at all it gets announced, it gets announced in October and it will be with effect from probably six to nine months to enable people to register with SEBI or make other arrangements. Uh, is If the bond so inclusion news does yeah, come yeah. in October, is that priced in, uh, uh, Jayesh? No, no, it's not priced in because it's, as I said, like it may come because we had so many times it coming, not coming, right? Uh, there would be some lag of rally further uh, if it gets priced in, even if it takes six months for actual money to come in. Okay. All right, so we could expect a rally if uh, JPM actually makes that announcement in October. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. Where, what are you expecting? Sub seven? Yeah, definitely. So it's like uh, 20 basis point is kind of from here. Uh, so it's, it's sub likely. seven, right? So. Okay. Would you be as bullish, Abhishek, if uh, the index announcement comes, we could see a sub seven number? I mean, assuming uh, a crude is where it is today and assuming 10 year is at 7.18. Uh, can we go sub-7? Well, so Indian bond yields have been quite uh, resilient to the rise in global yields because of this index, index inclusion yeah. potential announcement. Uh, also, lower crude prices have helped. Uh, I think before uh, uh, I, before the February budget, uh, uh, when these rumors were there about index inclusion, I think 10-year bond yields were uh, around 670 mark. Uh, since then, uh, the world has changed a lot uh, in terms of how central banks have reacted, global commodity prices, etc. So, yeah, I do see scope for yields to come down. Uh, uh, how much? I mean, below 7% if it sustains. Uh, I mean, uh, we have to see. But yeah, I mean, some more downside towards 7% levels is if the announcement is positive. Okay, fair enough. Uh, but be before that, let's come to the Reserve Bank's reaction to the CPI numbers itself. Uh, let me start with you, uh, Pasna. What? To how will the Reserve Bank look at these numbers and what are you penciling in on September 30th? So, Lata, like I said, I don't think much changes to their averages. So, uh, that is one thing. And apart from that, of course, our expectation is for a 35 basis of a rate hike. Uh, that will bring a repo rate at 575. So, uh, for this uh, meeting, that's where we are. And for the subsequent meeting, we're expecting another 25 basis. Okay, so your uh, terminal rate as of now is 6%, peak rate for a repo. For this year, yes. We oh. will have to look at how things evolve over a period of time. Okay. But yes, for this year, we are at 6%. Yes, yes, we could all be speaking too soon. There is the US CPI number uh, in perhaps 48 hours. And uh, there is the FOMC meeting. So we, uh, of course, have to be, like they say, data dependent. Uh, what are you expecting, Nikhil, on September 30th and in terms of subsequent uh, rate hikes? So, Lata, we are also uh, seeing 25 to 35 bits rate high uh, on September 30th. Okay. And another 25 possible in uh, December, okay. early, which we, we are seeing terminal rate not only for this year, but generally in this cycle at 6%. Oh, all right. Uh, uh, let's hope that's where it stands. Uh, we are uh, uh, looking forward to, of course, more positive news from the geopolitical front. Rupa, your thoughts? Uh, if um, RBI's projections, uh, if it um, undershoots, uh, you know, the uh, uh, actual inflation trajectory, then only um, uh, they will uh, be less aggressive. But personally, I feel that they were quite right because they were they have expected inflation, average inflation was for this quarter at 7.1 percent. Yes. So uh, this is closer to their projections. Yes. So, and they have been giving this message very clearly that they will... Uh, uh, front load the rate increases. Mm. So uh, everything will be governed by uh, what Fed, Federal Reserve does. 
but uh, I personally feel if Fed raises by 75, then we can expect another 50 bips increase from uh, Reserve Bank of India. Another 50. Because, uh, so you are yes, expecting yes. 25 in the, uh, 25 or 35 in uh, uh, September and another. It by 50 oh, uh, oh, oh, okay. load, okay. and then they will slow down. Okay. That's what I expect because uh, but you know the, currently what is on the radar is also rupee. The rupee is suffering from depreciation pressure. So mm -hmm. if overall inflation remains elevated, then uh, they will uh, finish off the quantum and mm -hmm. uh, they will be aggressive now, and then they will uh, slow down. Oh, fair enough. Uh, that, that possibility always exists. So there is one person expecting 50 as well. Uh, uh, whom am I left out? Uh, Jayesh, what are you expecting? I'm kind of looking at 35, or not more than that. Uh, that's also on the outer side. Uh, I'm not sure about the next 25, right? So that oh, you mean they can stop at 575, you think? Yeah, so that's the terminal kind of look. Uh, but of course, uh, how the geopolitical set up uh, post October and uh, November, right? So you have Europe, the US, and China, all the three event in that month, right? So that that would be the more deciding yeah. factor than anything else, uh, I, on the global. Yes, yes. Uh, in well. addition to inflation, we have to always, always be prepared uh, for geopolitical surprises these days. Uh, but, uh, I mean, I think I would go with what uh, Rupa is saying. The Reserve Bank should worry about the currency if it uh, is seen as being soft on uh, inflation or uh, in terms of rate hikes. Uh, Abhishek, I didn't ask you, your thoughts after the CPI number, any change in your expectations? Well, 35 basis points uh, this month, which is in line with what the swap markets are also pricing in. Uh, 25 in December, which should bring policy rates to 6%, which is broadly the level of neutral rate that we think uh, RBI will be targeting. And we don't rule out some further hikes. Uh, uh, if RBI is really serious about bringing inflation down towards 4% uh, by the end of next fiscal year, yeah. uh, then given the kind of inflation internals we have, uh, uh, I think growth is holding up reasonably well. Yes. Uh, uh, in, in that case, I, I, and the kind of CAD picture we have, I mean, CAD mm. is staying high despite food prices coming down. Uh, there is a case for, there could be a case for some more tightening next year, but we have to see uh, how the uh, global picture revolves mm -hmm. to get a firmer handle on that. So your uh, peak rate assumption at the moment is six or six quarter? I think it should be at least six half if RBI is targeting inflation to come down towards four percent, but we are saying six percent by December. Okay, I think that is more or less a consensus, six uh, percent by uh, December and uh, perhaps uh, there is a there's plenty of data and events uh, in between for uh, the reality to move either ways. Uh, Abhishek, Jayesh, Rupa, Upasna and Nikhil, thank you very much indeed for joining me and parsing the inflation and IIP numbers. Uh, the uh, uh, summary from the macroeconomic data that we've got is that inflation is a little worse than expected coming in at 7%. After four months of falling, we have a higher inflation number and it's a little higher than street expectations. The IIP number is a little lower than street expectations coming in at 2.4, a bit of a disappointment on consumption, but we can ignore that for the moment and worry a little more about inflation. Thank you very much for joining this special broadcast on the state of the economy. Uh, keep it with CNBC TV. I think there's lots more lined up.